When it comes to Nvidia graphics cards, most people immediately think of the Founders Edition. And well, for good reason. It's clean, well built, and is usually the first model out the gate. But not everyone wants a Founders card, or in some cases, like with a 5060 Ti, Nvidia haven't even made one, and instead are relying solely on AIB partners to offer something up to the masses. And while the big guns like Asus, MSI and the likes have something solid, the card you specifically want isn't always there to buy. Whether it's availability issues, pricing fluctuations or something else, having a solid alternative is important, especially in the, well, sorry state of the industry right now. And that is where the NO3D RTX 5060 Ti 16 gig Twin X2 steps in. This card doesn't try to reinvent the wheel. It's not here to dazzle you with RGB or an oversized cooler. What it offers instead is simplicity, a no-nonsense design that delivers the same performance as any MSRP-based card would, and more importantly, at the same MSRP price. And in 2025, where getting the exact GPU model you want can still be a challenge in some regions, well, that alone makes it worth paying attention to. Now, of course, with 16 gig of VRAM, it's also part of the new baseline for gaming GPUs. Eight gig cards just, well, don't cut it anymore. Not unless you're strictly playing older or lighter titles. And with more modern games pushing textures and draw distances harder than ever, having that extra buffer makes a real world difference, especially in the long run. So for gamers who want a current gen experience without the faff, this might just be the quiet contender that's worth a look. So today we're going to drill down into exactly what this card has to offer. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. This sucks. I wish I had an upgrade. You have summoned the gaming genie. What is your wish? Better gear for an upgrade? Your wish is my command. Zone Elite XL Mat, smooth, comfortable, spill resistant, and the sleek Zone Mat for precision gaming. NZXT Function Elite Mini TKL, magnetic switches, compact and precise. Featuring per key adjustable actuation with 40 points of sensitivity, ranging from 0.6mm to 4mm to fit your individual needs. Lift Elite Wireless Mouse, lightweight, responsive and ultra fast. Capsule Elite Mic, pro quality audio, crystal clear, every game chat will be flawless. Genie approved upgrades. Make your gaming wishes come true with NZXT. Find out more by clicking the link in the description below. So design-wise, the Inno 3D Twin X2 is as understated as they come. It measures in at 250 millimeters long, 116 millimeters high, and 41 millimeters wide, making it well, a relatively compact dual slot card, which is something Inno 3D have tried to push as of late. Now, due to its size, it should fit comfortably in most mid-tower and even some ITX cases without any issues, making it perfect for small form factor builds. Now, the card itself comes in a kind of matte black finish with two fans mounted on a simple plastic shroud that, even though it is plastic, incorporates a kind of brushed metal design with a slight kind of industrial look to it. There's no flashy branding, no RGB, and just, well, no wild assets. Just a clean design that's easy to work into any build. The back of the card is similarly minimal. There's a black metal back plate with some kind of basic cutouts for ventilation. But again, no flair for the sake of it. It's, well, purely functional. And well, that's honestly refreshing to see, especially when some brands are still plastering massive logos and LED strips across, frankly, every surface. There's also a couple of heat pads here too. So again, it's not a big style move, but instead is relying on doing the job that it's meant to do and while doing it well. Now, cooling is handled by the dual fan setup, which NO3D calls the Twin X2 system. There's nothing, well, especially groundbreaking here. But again, it does the job. The fans are also relatively quiet under load, and the cooler keeps temperatures within those all-important expected limits, at least for a 5060 Ti. Now, for power, you're actually looking at a single 8-pin PCI Express connector to give the 180-watt TGP of juice to the card. That means no 12-volt 2x6 connector, and, well, this makes it arguably an easier upgrade for some users who are maybe on older hardware. This is also something we've seen NO3D do on the lower tier of cards, like we saw on the 40 series, where I guess not all models have a 12 volt 2x6 connector, and instead they use the trusty old favourite instead. 
Now, due to the card being small, in the grand scheme of things and adopting that kind of slim design, it's no surprise that it comes in at just 1,020 grams. So it won't be any form of issue inside your system in terms of, I guess, GPU sag. And that's why no stand or bracket actually comes included in the box, which further helps Inno3D hit that MSRP price that Nvidia have set, which is, I guess, arguably harder than ever to, to actually be able to hit. Now, in terms of the specs, the 5060 Ti 16 gig is identical to the other reference spec cards. You're getting the same core count, the same 128-bit memory bus, and of course, the full 16 gig of GDDR7 memory. And that last part matters more than ever. In 2025, 8 gig GPUs just aren't cutting it anymore. Unless you're strictly playing older or eSport titles, you're likely going to run into VRAM limitations. So for anyone playing the latest AAA games or planning to hold onto their card for a few years, 16 gig really should be the baseline. But of course, in O3D do have an 8 gig model of, well, this card. And whether you go for the 8 gig, which, well, I do recommend to stay away from, or the 16 gig model, it is available as a stock version like we have here, or an OC model, which is also available in the black like we have here, or white if you want something a little bit different. Now, while this model comes in with a boost clock of 2,572 MHz, again, just like any other reference spec 5060 Ti, the OC model increases that by less than 2%, giving us another 30 MHz of speed. Though in all honesty, you'll be expected to pay a slight premium for that. And honestly, I just, well, it can't be justified in my mind, as you'd be better off getting the MSRP model, well, like I have here, and just increasing the clock speed. Though at 30 MHz faster speeds, that's not going to make any difference in raw kind of performance outside of margin of error anyway. Now talking about performance and overclocking, something we always look to do with these cards is see how far we can push things, and also what that means compared to stock performance. It's here where we actually managed to push the core clock up by another 260 megahertz, whilst we managed to push the memory to the max allowed overclock here, which is 375 megahertz, or 3000 megahertz effective. What this has done for our clock speeds is push our core clock to 2,667 MHz and our boost clock to 2,832 MHz, which should be enough to give us a decent boost in our gaming performance, and more importantly, all for free. Now, for performance, as this model runs at the reference clocks, you can expect the same out-of-the-box numbers for any MSRP-based reference spec 5060 Ti 16 gig. Though what we found was actually quite interesting, as in our testing, we found that the NO3D card managed to sit pretty much neck and neck with the ASUS Prime OC card that we tested for our day one review, with only a single frame between them in all of our tests. Now, being so close in performance, either card could come out on top, and, well, was pretty much just luck of the draw, and retesting each card could see the results flip or the cards coming in with identical performance. And that's the interesting part, as the Prime card is pre-overclocked. So whether this just means it was well, a pretty minor overclock that made little to no difference, or the cooling on the Inno card allowed for more frequent and sustained boost. Either one, I guess, is hard to say. Now, once we apply our overclock, we do see a healthy increase in performance, ranging from a single FPS here and there to sometimes up to six frames per second, depending on the game. So overclocks do matter, but obviously they have to be on a slightly larger scale. Now, to see how the card handles under sustained load, we ran F124 on a loop for an hour. It's here where the GPU core remained stable, peaking at around 64 degrees when running at stock and just 65 degrees when overclocked, with average temps actually sitting a little bit lower around 62 degrees and 63 degrees respectively. That's only a one degree increase for the overclock, which is, I guess, a fair trade for the performance boost that we saw. Memory junction temperatures were also well under control, sitting at 61 degrees stock and 63 degrees overclocked, both cooler than the core, so nothing to really worry about there. Fan speeds were similarly close with the stock profile averaging 1,730 RPM and the overclock pushing it to just 1,790 RPM. So that's a modest 60 RPM bump, meaning virtually no difference in noise and remaining fairly quiet overall when compared to the rest of the fans inside the system. Then in terms of the power draw, well, this also barely changed with a single degree fluctuation between stock and overclocked. And this is down to the power limit being locked on the board. So all of the benefits of the overclock I guess with none of the drawbacks. So without sounding like a broken record, whenever we look at, I guess, any Inno3D card, I find myself saying the same thing. 
In a time where availability is getting better but still isn't perfect, it's sometimes down to what you as a consumer can actually get your hands on. And that doesn't always mean that an FE card is available to you. So having an alternative can be helpful. And that's, I guess, exactly what the Twin X2 gives you. An alternative without any of the sacrifices. Sure, some people may prefer the design of an FE, or some might not. But that's not to say that an Inno card is bad looking. It's simple, will fit in with any system or theme, and will do the job well. What I'm trying to say is that the Inno 3D Twin X2 doesn't try to be anything other than what it is a clean, affordable, no frills option for those wanting to spend the bare minimum for that particular tier of GPU, in this case being the 5060 Ti. Now, I guess if you're wanting a GPU that doesn't scream gamer from every angle, this is actually a great choice. And sometimes while that's great for most users, it can also be its downfall as it slips under the radar and gets somewhat forgotten about. Not because it's bad, but because it doesn't have the wow factor, but I consider that more of a volume product and not one that will necessarily grab every headline going. Now, in terms of headlines, there is one that it does hit. It performs as it should. It stays quiet and it doesn't run hot. It also gives you that essential 16 gig of VRAM that's quickly becoming the baseline in 2025. And most importantly, it sticks to MSRP. With how unpredictable GPU pricing still is, that alone, in my opinion, makes it worth a look. If you're in the market for a 5060 Ti and you don't need all the flashy features, then yeah, the Inno 3D Twin X2 is about as straightforward as it gets. And in today's market, that might be exactly what you need. Again, I'd recommend staying away from the 8 gig variant because it just isn't a viable option in 2025 and should be avoided unless you're just wanting something functional for older style games that maybe aren't as VRAM heavy. As I said in my launch day coverage of the 5060 Ti, it's a good card, but it feels like it's much the same as what we've seen with the rest of the stack. If you already have a 40 series card, especially something like a 4060 Ti 16 gig or above, there's just not much here for you. The generational leap isn't wide enough to make that switch worth it. But for those on older hardware, something like a 1660, a 2060, maybe even a 10 series card, this could actually be the perfect upgrade, assuming that you can get it for MSRP because if it creeps even $20 to $30 above its intended price, then the value story starts to slip, and that then completely changes the dynamic. So all in all, like I say, well-built, well-priced, well-performing card that gives consumers an option outside of the elusive bigger brand models that come in at a higher price and have features that not everyone wants. And in this day and age, well, sometimes that alone makes all the difference. So there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, then a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do, then you can help support us over on Patreon. You'll get access to a bunch, I'm talking a ton of exclusive benefits, including behind the scenes content, bi-weekly game nights, and so much more. The link is as always down below. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.